Every season of Survivor is a story. There are main characters, sidekicks, comic reliefs, and villains. A good season of Survivor tells a compelling story. It will grip you and have you rooting for someone and against someone else. You will want to binge episode after episode to see what happens next until it all finishes with a hopefully satisfying conclusion. Each story that we look at together will go through one character's journey from beginning to end, from the time that they are introduced until they inevitably get their torch snuffed or win the game. We will look at every character moment and strategic move to determine whether they were a hero or a villain and whether they were a good or bad strategist. And with that, welcome to Once Upon an Island. For reference, we will only be observing what the TV show is showing us and what story is being told through the show. No future seasons will be mentioned as the story and characters here have no idea about what happens in those future seasons. All character moments and strategic moves are interpreted with the mindset of what the story is trying to tell us. And before we start, I want to thank you all for liking these videos and subscribing to the channel. That is oh so important to helping us grow and making this channel an all-star. But if you want to do a little bit more to keep this all going, then consider supporting us on Patreon. You get all the videos I release weeks early, and you can vote for which survivor stories I tell, like this one, and even get an exclusive Patreon-only video each month. Thank you for your support. 39 days, 18 all-stars, one survivor. Amber Burkich was a castaway who returned from her time on Survivor's second season, Survivor The Australian Outback, to play on Survivor's eighth season, Survivor All-Stars. Her time on The Australian Outback had her strategically as Jerry Manthe's sidekick all season, and her character moments mostly focused on her love for food and how that was all she was really thinking about even when Jerry was using that same food as a metaphor for sex. She ended up getting pretty far in the game last time, but that was mostly due to her tribe's alliance having the numbers through the post-merge game. So will she improve this time? Will she play a strategic game that shows everyone that she is a much better player than we have previously seen? Let's find out. What is important to note about Survivor All-Stars is how the tribes are separated. For the first time ever, there are three tribes of six. The Moga Mogo and Saboga tribe each have two former winners, and Shapara, the tribe Amber is on, has none. The Shapara tribe consists of Rob Sesternino, Sue Hawk, Boston Rob, Alicia Calloway, Big Tom, and Amber Burkich. This is the only tribe that contains no past winners and is definitely the outlier for this season. Now, unlike in past seasons, there is no marooning by Jeff to start us all off. The players just get dropped off at their beach with a machete and a map to the water well, and that's it. Meager supplies at best. While we hear from every single member of the Shapara tribe in the opening scene on the beach, Amber is almost invisible until halfway through the episode when Boss and Rob offers her an alliance and even though she smartly agrees, we don't hear from her about why she agrees, we just hear from him about it. So what do you think? You wanna make an alliance? <laughs> Cover our own asses? I don't know if I can take you seriously or not. I'm being 100% serious. Do you want to? Yeah. Her one and only confessional this episode is when they finally receive tree mail and she is hoping that at the challenge there's an opportunity to win some fire because so far huh, they have had no success making any. It seems to be an immunity challenge but we're hoping with the new immunity challenge we can win some fire because our tribe is, uh, we're hurting pretty bad. Her tribe does end up winning immunity so she is safe and that is it for her premiere episode. However, there is a scene in the season's recap episode that shows Shapara doing a mock tribal council after winning immunity in this first episode. And since it is from the recap, it won't count towards any character moments or strategic moves, but each member of Shapara imitates a member of Saboga with Amber narrating the whole scene and pretending to be Tina Wesson. Lord, please forgive me for my language that I'm about to use right now. My vote is for Jerry. Aside from that funny mock tribal, Amber is not really a part of the premiere in any significant fashion. She basically makes an alliance with Boston Rob. Amber and I have an alliance for obvious reasons. She's beautiful, obviously. Any idiot can see that. And uh, that's it. We don't know anything about her life since she played last time or if she plans on utilizing any different strategies this time, nothing. Things we heard from other players in this premiere, nothing from her. 
as of now, it seems like she will not be an important part of the season and she may not even last very long. It is now episode two and none of the tribes have any fire, not even Saboga, who went to tribal council, which means that they can't boil the parasite filled water from their well and therefore will probably be dehydrated, which they already are. However, it is raining now in Panama and this causes a celebration by Shapira as they sing and dance. We got some water, we got some water, we got some water. Woo! Have you ever At the reward challenge, Saboga wins some lousy blankets, but it is pointless as Jeff gives every tribe a pot and flint instead so they can all finally make fire. Shapira wins immunity and Amber is still relegated to being a background character. So we move on to episode three where each tribe is tasked with building the best shelter they can in 24 hours. Amber elects to sit out, but Boston Rob is leading the project. And while he does, she is checking him out and finally tells us her thoughts on her alliance with him. In the beginning, the flirting with Boston Rob was complete strategy for me. And I'll admit when I saw him building that shelter, he was pretty hot building that shelter. <laughs> She clearly has the hots for him and he has the hots for her. And it is really enhanced when they win the reward challenge, get some alcohol, and she openly admits in front of everyone to wanting to kiss him, which undoubtedly is telling the rest of the tribe just how close they are. The wine hit Amber a little bit strong. Uh, she wanted to start kissing me in front of everybody. If you're gonna kiss me, kiss me now because I'm not kissing you with nasty breath later on. At the immunity challenge, the Shapara and Saboga tribes are surprised when Jenna Maraska quits due to her mom's health getting worse and worse. Due to someone who's very ill at home right now, that's getting worse. I need to pull myself out of the game. A few people then express their opinions on quitting, including some who don't agree with Jenna's decision at all. And Amber is actually the first one to console Jenna and offer her a hug. <laughs> I feel really bad for her. Can I give her a hug? Of course. As it turns out, her mother does pass away soon after she arrives home, so she definitely made the right choice here. Moving on to episode four, everyone has noticed how close Boston Rob and Amber have become, and Rob Sesternino makes it plain as day what he expects. But hearing these things from multiple players in the tribe just puts a target on Amber's back. Oh, you're so warm. Boston Rob and Amber are gonna do it. I don't know when, but they're gonna do it. They've got the mat, the pillows. Once again, Shapira wins reward and back at camp using the supplies they just won, Boston Rob bathes her and says how this is a bit risky because it could be showing the others how close they have gotten, but that ship has clearly sailed. Amber and I, we're not so sure if it's a good idea if we bathe each other because the uh, tribe might get the wrong idea. Let's just do this all day long every day. Oh, oh. At the immunity challenge, for the first time all season, Shapiro loses and finally needs to cut one of their own. Back at camp, Amber approaches Big Tom with an idea. Hey, let's vote out Rob Sestrino, as she is sure they can get Boston Rob in on the plan and they'll have the numbers. Big Tom is all for this. This is what I think. You and me, Boston Rob will be on our side. So I'll vote out. At Tribal Council, Jeff asks Amber, what can you contribute to this tribe that you have taken from your regular life? And she says she's really good at calming people down, keeping them from fighting, and basically being the glue that keeps her tribe together. In particular though, keeping Alicia and Boston Rob from fighting. I think we have a few on our tribe who tend to lose their temper pretty quickly or throw fits. And I think I'm very good at calming people down and talking some sense into them. Through some more talk at Tribal, Propes finds out about the romantic duo of Rob and Amber. And Amber says, hey, I'm young, having fun, and she just totally plays it down. Her and Boston Rob both act like it's really nothing and say that the game is more important, which seems to be working as no one is connecting the dots that this is actually all part of the game as well. I'm out here to play the game of Survivor. I'm not out here to play a dating game. Amber's plan does work, and they do end up voting out Rob Sestrinino unanimously. Rob, the tribe has spoken. At the next reward challenge, there are big stakes. The losing tribe will be dissolved and drafted into the two remaining tribes. Saboga so loses, though, and therefore Moga Moga drafts Ethan Zahn and Jerry Manthe, while Shapira gets Rupert and Jenna Lewis. Rupert. Rupert, no longer a member of Saboga, you are now a member of Shapira. Yeah. 
Shapira then wins immunity. So we move on to episode six, where Sue Hawk is emotionally distraught. This is because at the last immunity challenge, Richard Hatch got naked and purposely ran into her with his, uh, his package. Amber thinks that because they are on Survivor, Sue has a lot of time to sit and think about this and that uh, all that time has just amplified how bad the event was for her. I think it's just gotten worse and worse in her head as it's gone along. I think maybe at first she was thinking, Oh, you know, I can get him for this, but now it's really starting to bother me. Amber and Boston Rob then decide to cut a deal with the newcomers, Rupert and Jenna, by pretending they are on the bottom of this tribe and they desperately need this alliance to stay safe, which is probably how Rupert and Jenna feel as well. And of course, this is a bunch of garbage, but it does work as they form a Final Four alliance with Rupert and Jenna, who completely believe them. Rob and I came up with the idea to approach Rupert and Jenna, tell them that, you know, we think we're on the outs, we think we're in trouble, We'll save you if you save us. After a war challenge, Sue blows up on Jeff Probst and quits the game. I was violated, humiliated, dehumanized, and totally spent, Jeff. It wasn't sorta, of Jeff. That night at camp, the rest of Shapara makes a pact to be the final six, and with that, Rob and Amber have an onion alliance intact. As of now, it's up to them how their layers are defined, but basically, Big Tom and Alicia are five and six, the outer layer. Rupert and Jenna are three and four, the middle layer, and of course, Rob and Amber are the core of the onion. The next morning, the Shapara tribe receives tree mail that tells them that there will be no immunity challenge since Sue quit, so they hold a not so serious moment of silence. Let's have a moment of silence for Sue. No, we don't have any whiskey. Let's have some rice. <laughs> Let's have some rice. Amber then tells us how Shapara is the best when it comes to being happy and making light out of anything. She says how a good portion of Survivor is simply maintaining good spirits, which is absolutely true for the pre-merge. You can never count out Shapira for making a sad moment into a happy moment. We're the happy tribe, and somehow we always find a way to laugh about it. Moving on to episode 7, where Shapira continues their hot streak and wins the combined reward slash immunity challenge, and they get to bring one Mogo Mogo member with them on this reward on the expensive yacht. They pick Kathy, and when they do so, they make sure that she feels welcomed and loved by them all. We got a new girl, her name is Kat. We got a new girl, her name is Kat. She fits in just like that. She fits in just like that. The Shapiro crowd, you know what they've got that we don't have is they're having fun. They're enjoying the game. Episode 8 brings with it a reward challenge that sees castaways from each tribe facing off one on one on a rolling log. Whoever falls in the water first loses. Amber dominates both times she does this and actually secures the victory for her tribe. Amber looking very confident. up and going. Jerry first in. Amber scores for Shapira. Now, 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 now. That night at camp, Rupert says he has walked up on Rob and Amber multiple times where they look extremely guilty. We then hear from Amber about how at first she was just stringing Rob along, but now she has really grown some feelings for him. Definitely at first I was stringing him along. The flirting was a huge strategy in the beginning, um, but then I got caught up in it and feelings. Boston Rob then says she is perfect along with a few other things and compliments her. And then for the first time on camera. Amber is slamming. Shapara wins immunity again, and episode nine is a recap, the same recap that had that mock tribal council, and it doesn't affect the overall story. So we move on to episode 10, where... All right, drop your buffs. There we go. You're now a member of Shapira. Have a spot on the red map. Wow. They are swapping tribes this late in the game, for the first time, a bit crazy. What is even crazier is that literally everyone just swaps to the other tribe. So nothing has really changed at all, except for Amber, who is the only one to stay on her original tribe and therefore is now in a terrible situation for her game. Amber is the only one to change tribes. 
You stay with Shapira, but your tribe members are all new. As the tribes go to part ways, multiple members of the old Shapira come back and hug Amber. They clearly feel a very close connection with her, something we haven't seen much of in the uh, story so far, but especially Rob, who is now separated from her for the first time. Back at camp, Amber tells us that this situation she is in is an interesting one, but ultimately feels like she got screwed when all she wanted was just to go to wherever Rob went. When Jeff held up the new pot full of buffs and we're all picking them out one by one, really the main thought that was going through my head was, let me just pull the same color that Rob pulls. Now that she is on a tribe full of former Moga Mogos, it feels do or die for her, and sure enough, they lose the immunity challenge on the very last question, and her game is now in major trouble. As both tribes go to leave the challenge, Boston Rob cuts a deal with Lex to save Amber's life. If you can, if you can. Today after the challenge was over, I grabbed the Lex. I said, if you can save Amber, I'll remember it and I'll help you later on in the game. Back at camp, Boston Rob tells us that he misses Amber so much that he has written an A on his arm to show support. There really is no hiding this relationship from anyone. I put an A on my arm for Amber. Hopefully she makes it to the next challenge. At the Shapira camp, Amber talks to Kathy and begins by pitching they vote out Jerry instead and even gets on her hands and knees to do so. I'm voting for Jerry. That's my desperate attempt. Can I get down on my knees and beg? Please, Kathy, keep me in the game. Vote for Jerry. However, she then has a serious discussion with Kathy where she wheels and deals and makes some promises about what will happen in the post-merge game if they keep her, basically promising you will have more power if you keep me. She also finds out from Kathy that when they do merge, Lex and Big Tom have a secret alliance and Big Tom is planning on flipping to Lex to do whatever Lex wants. Well, doesn't he think that Big Tom will be on his side in the end? He does think Big Tom will be on his side, yeah. After much deliberation between Kathy, Sheehan, and Lex at Tribal Council, they all do help Amber vote out Jerry and she is saved. Jerry, the tribe has spoken. Episode 11 starts with Boston Rob being an absolute mess. We hear then from Big Tom that it reminds him of having to wean a calf from its mama on his farm. It may take a few days, but eventually it will happen. But right now, Boston Rob is a mess. I never seen Rob all screwed up like this, but it'll take about three days to get a calf weaned from its mother. A human's about to say. At the reward challenge, when her old tribe sees that she is still in the game, they are genuinely excited. She really is loved by them all. Rupert wins the individual reward challenge and brings along his close ally, Jenna Lewis, which makes sense, but he also picks Amber as well, since he feels bad she has been with the old Mogo Mogo for one whole day. They do end up having fun on the reward, and Amber gets to truly embrace being a girly girl. I'm in heaven with two goddesses. <laughs> While on that same reward challenge though, Jenna and Rupert are talking a lot about what to expect, their alliances, stuff like that, basically about how to get to the end of the game. And Amber reminds us that she has made a deal with Kathy and Lex that they could go to the end with, but she knows she can't tell Rupert and Jenna that, who think they're also going to the end with her and Rob, which is uh, all they're talking about on the reward anyways. I was a little nervous because I made a deal with Lex and Kathy that they could come to the end with me, Big Tom, and Rob. I couldn't tell Rupert and Jenna that. Sometimes it's better just to know when to say nothing. And finally, on day 26, Jeff Probst finally says, This time the box. Yeah! Yeah! It is the merge color. They are merged, and frankly, it has taken way too long to get to it, as it is now day 26, and there's only a third of the game left to be played. Back at camp, Amber helps come up with the new tribe name, and someone says it sounds a lot like a dance, so they all dance. How about Jabogamogo? Jabogamogo. Sounds like a dance. Boston, Rob, and Kathy both win individual immunity, so Rob talks to Amber about cutting Lex next. On paper, this is the best move for their games, as he poses the largest threat to their Shapira 6 alliance. She says, but why not Jenna and Rupert? She's worried if they vote out Lex, all eyes will be on them. You and I are stirring all this up. They're, they're gonna realize that it's all coming down to us. 
While she is right, Rob's gameplay is all about eliminating anyone who resembles a threat to him as soon as possible, and she is worried about breaking these deals, but at this point, they've already dug themselves in a pretty deep hole as they have deals with pretty much everyone in the game except maybe Sheehan. The smart move is to cut someone from Lex's alliance of three, since that would annoy less people than cutting someone from their foursome of Rupert, Tom, Jenna, and Alicia. Betraying the Shapara Six this early would spell doom, and despite getting themselves into a hole with all these deals, those same deals will ultimately carry them until the others realize that maybe their deal isn't the real one that Rob and Amber will be honest and true to. At Tribal Council, Lex is voted out. Lex, tribe is spoken. It seems like the plan is to steamroll Mogamogo Mogo until there's only the Shapara tribe left, which in that case we eliminate in the order of the Onion Alliance. Amber's sitting pretty if the others don't connect the dots and eliminate her and Rob. Episode 12 begins with us hearing from Kathy about how Amber lied straight to her face in the pre-merge when she wheeled and dealed to save herself. And uh, Kathy says that is worse than anything Boston Rob has ever done to her. Amber's playing a tough game. She's lying. She's lying like a rug. So. I voted for the person that just lied to my face several times. At the reward challenge, everyone gets to see a slice of a video that was sent to them from home, and Amber gets really emotional when she sees hers. Hi, Amber. Hi, Amber. Did we miss you? <laughs> Later on in the episode, Kathy wants Amber, Rob, and Jenna out of power. Those are the three she thinks are running the show, and she's only half right. So Kathy and Sheehan work on flipping people like Big Tom and Rupert with little success. This really shows how the bonds Amber and Rob have built with the Shapara Six are so strong that no one is going to be able to break them apart. At Tribal Council, the steamrolling of Mogo Mogo continues as Kathy is voted out. Kathy, the tribe has spoken. There are only seven players remaining, with one being a former Mogo Mogo in Xi'an. Episode 13 starts with a reward challenge that has the entire tribe filling out a quiz, answering questions about each other. When they are all asked who uses sex appeal in the game, Amber is the, uh, well, she's the unanimous choice. Who uses sex appeal as a weapon? Everybody says Amber, including Amber. <laughs> Back at camp, Alicia is upset because she was voted as least deserving to be an all-star tied with Sheehan, and as someone who thinks they are smarter than they really are. Not monikers that anyone really wants, though Sheehan does shrug off being voted as least deserving all-star as well. Amber observes that this behavior that Alicia is having by being annoyed at everyone for thinking these things will cause her to be voted out of the game because no one wants to live with someone who's just mad and annoyed at you you all the time. She's just being a big baby about it. People are observing it. People are getting annoyed with it. People will vote you out sooner because they don't want to live with it. Rupert won the early reward challenge and with that he gets to give out food to everyone on the tribe ranging from a nice steak dinner to a bowl of rice. Unfortunately in doing so he reveals the alliance of four and essentially the whole onion alliance. However this is not all bad news as Boston Rob tells us that this means Rupert really does trust Rob and Amber to be doing this. Basically, Rupert exposed our alliance of four. He's kind of sticking it in their face, which kind of shows me that he does trust myself and Amber to a degree. Back at camp, Sheehan has one immunity, and she talks to Amber about possibly making a move on someone like Boston Rob, and uh, Amber tells Sheehan that she trusts Rob, and she knows that if she lies Rob, uh, he will trust what she says regardless of that lie. Sheehan then has the light bulb go off and realizes that Amber is running the show behind the scenes, and Rob is the errand boy. Amber is the owner, and Rob is the dog. Amber is the brains of the operation. She's so sweet. You hate to hate her because she's so lovely and she's got those beautiful green eyes, but you know what? She's one of the shrewdest players out here. We then cut immediately to Boston Rob reading his letter from home out loud to Amber where he says if he didn't trust her so much, he would never be doing this. Remember the key to the game is loose lips sink ships. What? Honestly, like if I didn't trust you 100%, I would never let you read this. At Tribal Council, the first part of the Onion Alliance is removed as Alicia is voted out. Alicia, the tribe has spoken. Episode 14 begins with the family visit, which predictably draws a large emotional response from Amber when she sees her mom. Amber, here's your mom, Cheryl. Amber, get on that mat. Other than that, this episode isn't really about her, as Sheehan does lose immunity, and 
is next to go, but at Tribal when voting, Shan labels Amber the mastermind, giving her the credit and foreshadowing future events to the audience. This vote is for you out of respect. You are the mastermind right now. So from one she devil to another, this is the vote I'm casting tonight. Shan is then voted out and the steamrolling of Mogo Mogo is complete. Shan, tribe spoken. Episode 15 begins and trouble is a brewing while Rupert and Jenna Lewis think they are alone talking and planning. They plot to vote out Boston Rob next if he doesn't win immunity. Rob does catch them though in the act of talking about this and then goes and tells Amber who then tells us that she had no idea that this game gets harder as they go along. She thought the further you get in the game, the easier it would be, but uh, that is not the case. I was under the assumption that the game would be easier in the end because I knew we had our strategy set in the beginning, but I was completely wrong. At the reward challenge, Boston Rob wins a brand new truck and Jeff tells him that he can pick one person to go with. So uh, he picks Amber, which for some reason shocks Jeff Probes. That doesn't make sense, but don't worry. Jeff calls shotgun. Amber has to sit in the back of that truck. One person coming with you. you gotta be Amber. <laughs> really? Second, Boston Rob, you're driving. Amber, hop in right. back. I'll take shotgun. On that reward, as it turns out, whoever Rob brought will get a car as well. So by osmosis, Amber has won a car too. Oh my god. Shut <laughs> up! Are you serious? Amber, right here. No! Another new car. They then sit back, cuddle, and watch a movie together as Amber labels this as their first date. They are so in love, and frankly, it's too cute. Well, unbelievable time, you know that? Back at camp, Amber, without any need to do so, tells everyone that she won a car and she is so excited about it. I had the choice whether or not to tell people that I had won the car, but I felt that holding that back from them just wasn't me. Now, uh, she didn't have to tell them this. They wouldn't have known otherwise. This is 100% completely unnecessary information to give out that they can only use against her in the long run. They won a car apiece. I saved my candy. Well, it's easy to save your damn candy when you got a belly full and a new car. This news of the car enrages Rupert and helps motivate him to work on Big Tom to try to get him to flip with Rupert and Jenna. Or are you gonna band with me and put Rob out? Pick that damn couple and break that couple apart. Big Tom though is stubborn and still thinks his alliance with Rob and Amber is more valuable. He will not flip. As Boston Rob and Amber openly flirt and seem to be a little tipsy while doing so, everyone else looks very sullen. How old are you? Are you 18? I'm a good Catholic girl. Good Catholic girls is pretty sexy though. Prior to Tribal, Rob and Amber are in a conundrum. Should they vote out Rupert, who has been conniving against them recently, or Big Tom, who had a secret alliance with Lex since the beginning of the game that Amber found out about in the pre-merge and Rob later confirmed? I want to flip a coin. Cause that's how I feel about this right now. Rob and Amber talked to Tom about whether he has been floating the idea about voting out Rob, which according to Rupert, he has. Tom slips up and says, I'm just the swing vote. Amber says, no, you can't be the swing vote. You're a part of the Alliance. There's no swinging in the Alliance. Because I'm the pawn. I told you I'm the swing vote. No. If with, you, if you're you, with us, there is no swing. We're a group, there's no swing. This attacking of Big Tom seems like it may not be helpful at first, but by the end, her and Rob both clearly intimidate him into not flipping on them. Right, and you wanted to be that one. Why would you think I won't with Rupert and Jenna? I don't know, why you been feeding them stuff for the last two weeks telling them you want to get rid of me? At Tribal Council, they make the very risky move of voting on Big Tom instead of Rupert. Big Tom, Tribe spoken. Heard it. Finale time. It is Rupert versus Jenna versus Boston Rob versus Amber, and Jeff arrives by boat to deliver them some breakfast, which Amber does say is her favorite meal of the day. Breakfast is my favorite meal of the day. So this mm. meal is 
huge out here. Regarding the next vote, Amber is worried it will come down to a rock drop, uh, expecting that Rupert and Jenna will vote together for Rob or for Amber, and then of course Rob and Amber voting for one of them. And this is why voting out Tom was risky. If they had voted out Rupert, it is likely they could easily get Big Tom to vote with them to eliminate Jenna, but now they're sweating over a rock draw that was completely avoidable. Regardless, her and Rob work on Jenna and basically scare her out of putting her entire game on the fate of a rock draw. We knew it was gonna come down to a purple rock, so we gave her the option of voting out Rupert tonight. I didn't come 37 days to reach into a bag and let a color decide my fate. At the immunity challenge, Amber pulls out a crucial win, ensuring that even if there is going to be a rock draw, she'll be safe. And with that, Amber wins immunity. Guaranteed final three. At Tribal Council, Amber's doing some jury management, which we don't see much of, if at all, with Rob. She talks about how in the Australian Outback, she was voted out by Colby and was hurt. But later on, she realized that she had been outplayed by him, and this is what the game is all about. So, she voted for Colby to win the game, which is a great speech to give in front of the jury. In Australia, I had an alliance, um, or what I thought was an alliance. But when it came down to it, I actually ended up voting for the person who broke their alliance with me. Even though that speech is a complete lie, though I doubt anyone on this jury knows that or can confirm it. Colby never cast one vote against Amber on her first season. It was actually Tina who did so, and Tina was the one who made sure Amber was voted out. And guess what? Amber didn't vote for Tina to win the game. Amber is sneaky. Very sneaky. Anyways, Rupert is then voted out. Rupert, the tribe has spoken. Now it is all down to one last immunity challenge. And on the way to it, they have their rites of passage, which has Amber revealing to us that she is proud to have made it to the end, but also feels a bit guilty knowing that she is responsible for a lot of the players being voted out of the game. It made me feel proud to be standing where I was standing but also a little guilty knowing that I ended this game for a lot of those people. At the immunity challenge, at the immunity challenge, it is the classic hand on a heart idol. Don't move your hand or your foot or you're done and definitely don't put another hand on the idol. Amber needs Jenna to lose to guarantee her spot at the end. And what do you know? Jenna, you lifted your foot. I lifted my foot? You lifted your back foot. At this point, who cares who wins? The story has clearly told us that Rob and Amber are taking charge of the end and Jenna's out of contention. Well, actually, Amber does care as she tries to convince Rob to drop, which he agrees to. You've had it a million times, a million times. Okay. Jeff Probst then quickly talks Boston Rob out of this idea, and I am not sure why. Amber is running the show, and this move just further proves that, but basically gets blocked by Jeff. Okay, wait, 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 catch me up. What, what's going down? You're going to give her immunity and step off? I'll just fight it out anyway. <laughs> Damn you. Amber says she just wants to win, and Rob says, you'll have to beat me to do so. You wouldn't want me to just let you win. You'd want to beat me, <laughs> right? I just want to win, honestly. Well, you're going to have to beat me, though. However, Boston Rob does win immunity due to a slip up by Amber and it really doesn't matter as it is clear as day what will be taking place. Before Tribal, Rob floats the idea of maybe taking Jenna instead but knows that is stupid for his game in almost every regard. If he took Jenna over Amber, everyone on the jury will not vote for him because that is just cold blooded. He wonders if Amber has actually been conning him this whole time though. I don't know, maybe she conned me the whole way. Maybe it's the biggest scam in the history of Survivor. At Tribal Council, Rob votes Jenna out, securing Amber into the final two. Jenna, the tribe has spoken. Before Final Tribal Council, we get a montage of Rob and Amber being lovey-dovey. In fact, Rob even asks her, what fish would you like to eat? And she tells him, ah, uh, not the black fish. I'd actually prefer more of the blue fish. And what does he get? Exactly what she wants. The black one or the blue one? I don't like the black ones. You don't like the black ones? Well, I mean, not as much. Oh, last fish. This guy's gonna be the last fish I eat. But we do hear from her that this is not some long con. Her relationship with Rob is real, and it is exactly what got her this far in the game. And it turned into something real, and now we have an amazing bond, and I'm so glad that that was my strategy in the beginning. <laughs> Thank you.
final tribal council, Amber versus Boston Rob. Will the jury recognize and reward how Amber was truly running the show behind the scenes, or will Rob be credited with all the moves since he was the face of their alliance? Amber's opening speech leaves a lot to be desired. Usually the opening is a good way to set the tone of how you'll be approaching everyone's questions and to make it clear about what your gameplay has been all season. She essentially asked the jury to not be sore losers and recognizes that it was a lot of luck that got her to the end, not at all owning any any of the moves she made in this game. I think the reason why I'm sitting here right now is luck, all of you guys for not voting me off, and because of my lines with Rob. Lex is the first juror and he doesn't even have a question. He just rips into Boston Rob while completely ignoring Amber. And you know what? Sometimes no news is good news. What kind of a friend are you, Rob? What kind of a friend were you to me? As good as your game was, you sold out your values, you sold out your character, and you sold out your friends for a stack of greenbacks. Kathy is next and she asks Amber if her relationship with Rob is real, which Amber assures her it definitely is. I will tell you that yes, I have a genuine relationship with Rob and I definitely hope to continue our relationship afterwards. However, Kathy's vote seems like it is definitely for Rob despite how he completely betrayed her and Lex once the merge hit. Now, him and Kathy were both on Marquesas after all and have been friends for years since that season. I can't fault Amber for not getting her vote. Rupert is third and asks Amber what she did to get to the end. She talks about taking the game day by day and then at the tribe swap, she fought a lot to be saved. She also says she never lost focus and this is a lame, non-specific answer. It does absolutely nothing to show why she should get anyone's votes. To get to the final two, I played this game the best way I know how. And honestly, that was taking it day by day. And so I guess the main reason why I think I played the game well is that I never lost my focus. Alicia is fourth and she comes in red hot with anger. She asks each of them to explain their game using only one word. Amber says luck which is a garbage answer when trying to own your game, but Alicia is clearly more sour towards Rob than Amber. In one word only, how would you say you played this game, Rob? Competitively. Excuse me? Competitively. With luck. Thank you. She Ann is fifth and asks each of them to give three reasons why the other player should win. Amber says Rob ruled in the challenges, he's dependable with her, and he made an alliance with her. Uh, there's really nothing to gather here as it seems like Sheehan is probably voting for Amber anyways based on what we saw from her before she was voted out. And uh, two of Amber's reasons to vote for Rob are the same thing. He is dependable with Amber and he made an alliance with her. That's the same thing. You need to find one person that you can truly depend on and I found that in Rob. 10, 15 minutes into the game, he made an alliance with me and he stuck to it. Jenna is sixth and she asks what each of them are going to do if they win the million dollars. Amber says she wants to donate to a charity and it all feels forced, but Rob's answer feels forced as well. It's kind of a pointless question. Big Tom is the last juror and he asks Amber why she should win over Rob. She says, crap, I didn't want to have to answer this question, but essentially she says because she lied to Tom less than Rob. Rob had promised him a final two and multiple times throughout the season, including the family visit when Tom was talking to his son, he says that he plans on sitting in the the final two with Rob and Amber never promised him anything like that. While not amazing from her, it is actually a reason to vote for her. We really didn't break our word to each other whereas you and Rob did. If you're basing your votes on who had a stronger word and who broke their word, I think I didn't really break my word as much to you as Rob did. Rob then proceeds to rip into Tom and Tom ends up getting the last laugh. No hard feeling. No hard feelings, Tom. <laughs> Don't be stupid, stupid. I may have failed for seven ones. I failed for it twice. Not this time. Amber then closes out Final Tribal by saying how the jury taught her a lot about herself. She feels guilty for a lot of the actions she made in game, and she says she will take what she learned and use it in life. What is most important here though, is how she is empathetic towards the jury, and she claims she was honest with all of her answers. I know it was very hard for you guys all to express your feelings and be completely honest with us in every answer that I gave tonight. I was completely honest with you. It is time to reveal the vote, but before that, Rob has one big question to ask Amber. I love you with all my heart. Will you marry me? <laughs> and the votes are revealed. Kathy, Rupert, and Jenna vote for Rob, while Lex, Alicia, Big Tom, and Sheehan all vote for Amber, meaning Amber wins four to three. The winner of Survivor All-Stars. Ah! 
So let's break this down. How is Amber as a character? Pleasant, calming, and loved by all. She is not an explosive personality like quite a few people this season were, but she was always there being her nice, charming self, flashing that smile, listening, and just being friends with everyone. No one ever disliked her like they did her partner in crime. She was the glue on the Shapira tribe, and despite not making the best television, that calming, mom-like figure is what is needed to keep a group intact. Unfortunately, the show did very little little to reveal much to us about who Amber is beyond that and really did a great disservice especially since they knew she was going to be the winner and it isn't like we learned all that much about her on her last season that would carry over to this season as she was pretty much the sidekick to Jerry Manthe there as well and here she's pretty much portrayed as the sidekick again with Rob. The show doesn't really give her much character depth besides being Rob's girlfriend. Out of 17 character moments shown on the show, 15 were heroic and 2 were villainous making Amber a hero on Survivor All-Stars. Now, how is Amber as a strategist? She has quite a few weak areas in her game, as does Boston Rob, but her strength is her social game, something that he lacked. She is beloved almost all game by everyone, and even at Final Tribal, no one has sour grapes towards her. She worked smarter, not harder. She was the brains, and Rob was the brawn, and it worked. No one previously in Survivor had ever formed a duo like this that covers each other's weaknesses and just dominates all game. They were essentially one super player that had two votes at every Tribal. Could Amber have gotten to the end of one if Boston Rob wasn't there? Maybe, but way more unlikely. But the same goes for Boston Rob. Love it or hate it, they are both good players who joined forces to crush everyone. He was the hothead and she was the calming presence that contained him just enough to not blow up their game. Almost like an owner with a dog. The dog may think it's in charge, but the person holding the leash is really running the show. And it seems like only Shan truly figured out that while playing the game, and by the time she did, the game was almost over. Out of 43 strategic moments shown on the show, 32 were smart and 11 were dumb, making Amber a smart strategist on Survivor All-Stars. Thanks for watching. If you like the content you see here, then please support me in this channel on Patreon. Your financial support makes all this possible, so thank you, and thank you for watching.